Well, way back before our computer crapped out on us and put a halt to our movie making, we left Manzanillo on the Pacific side of Mexico, headed for Ixtapa. Some Coke bottles floating in the water, and once you, you see those, you know you're, uh, you're in for some fun. It smells bad. With an unexpected stop in the industrial port of Lazaro Cardenas, which surprised us with its wildlife. They basically classified us vagabonds, vagabundos. Official de designation is rough travelers. I shrugged off that old fear of deadly falling coconuts. There's no proof by it. There's no proof. Uh, when we met up with friends. I've got all the coconuts now. All of them. And they shared with us some piña coladas. Stop. With the help of our boat neighbor and his dinghy, we tried a little bit of spearfishing for dinner. In the cloudy water, Robbie managed to shoot at something. But now we were pretty convinced that the best spearfishing he had done was way back up in the Sea of Cortez. What has been cooler down there? I was tired of making drinking water by hand with the manual desalinator. So we packed up our things and traveled just around the bend to Zuataneo. Accompanied by dolphins, of course, the city was quite bustling, and the anchorage held more boats than we expected. We stood in the longest line for an ATM in Mexico yet. And because the port captain at Lazaro Cardenas didn't issue us a zarpe, which is the paperwork for the entrance and exit of ports, we had trouble obtaining a zarpe at this port, For this reason, we felt insecure and planned an early escape. Which was a pity. Ziwa seemed like a really cool place, despite the banana boat traffic in the anchorage. We processed some of the coconuts collected at Ixtapa. The result was perfect for making yellow coconutty curry sauce and several more piña coladas. We called the local drinking water service in the bay on the VHF and they arrived bright and early the next morning with clean Garifone jugs that we would empty into our tanks, and then they would come and pick up again about an hour later. Our departure from Zuataneo was marked by sea turtles and rocks covered by seabirds. visit by some speckled dolphins who found pleasure in trying to bite off Rosa's rudder.
Although the appearance of hunting packs of dolphins usually scares away the fish, especially when they group up right around the line and hook, we still manage to reel something in. Ravi has kindly put up a temporary sunshade with our uh, our sunshade that we're meant to put up at anchor. How many turtles do we see daily? Today? Whew. This is what? 100, 150? Quite easy to spot them with the sun. They, you see something shining in the water and you're like, oh, there's one, there's one. At any time you can see like three, four, five turtles around the boat. There's an innumerable amount of them. There's there's an uncountable amount of them. You can only imagine how many turtles there must have been like a hundred years ago. People are making an effort like in uh, Zuataneo. There was a, a little pen surrounding a, an area of uh, turtle eggs that they had sectioned off on the beach. They actually took them out from their nests and put them back in the sand in an area. They actually go out at night when the turtles are laying their eggs and they just take them out as they're laying them. She comes sad because the mother goes all through the work. She digs the hole, she sits there and uh, she lays her eggs and then she fills them up and there's no eggs in it. My favorite is the bird standing on top of the turtle. They're hard to capture on film because I don't have a telephoto lens. All throughout the passage we saw smoke rising up from the land. We thought about the forest fires affecting all those folks we know way up north. But down south, as far as here? Well, the algae followed us this far. At night, the smoke revealed itself to be some sort of large-scale fire. And in the morning, Acapulco began to majestically appear out of the haze. It was invigorating to arrive in this big city. High rises all around, a packed harbor. We had a gentleman motor up to us and offer us a mooring ball for about 10 or $15 a night. But we tucked our anchor in among the crowd of pangas instead. The panga beach was alive with fishermen doing fiberglass work and ferrying in and out their banana boats. Upon further inspection, the high-rises and hotels seem to be predominantly abandoned, indicating a former golden age of tourism here. One thing definitely remained in season at this time, however, the golden fruit littering every street corner. Acapulco gold. Sweet yellow mangoes. Local tourists crammed themselves onto the small beaches, but no one seemed to be crowding the famous cliff jumping arena. I really wanted to catch a show, 
but we felt uneasy about strolling the streets of the city at night or leaving the dinghy for too long. After our previous incident of theft involving the dinghy, It looks like we have this kind of wonderful conundrum, uh, having an opportunity to take on an even bigger boat project with the help of the man who raised Robbie. This will mean having to sell Rosa. We've tried having two boats before at the same time and it was not, not fun. I highly do not recommend having two boats. Possibly taking on this new project means um, finding a good home for Rosa. We left Acapulco reluctantly, knowing that we hadn't even scratched the surface of what could have been explored. But now we were possibly on our way to a new boat and a new adventure. These small abundant fish, known locally as chula, fed us well during this passage. Make a very like, light fish soup with just a handful of noodles in it. I had to force Robbie to take the lines out of the water. It's very interesting. I think, it's a, I think it was, must be closer to the dark tuna because it's got like it's got some serious teeth. Like, yeah. With so much extra meat around, and of course being without a refrigerator, we had to salt and dry much of it. We're just traveling over a relatively shallow bank. It made me think about how much the geology of a an area, even underwater, even hundreds of meter un uh, meters underwater, affects your sea state. It's quite calm right now. Well, the ship is going to go flying this thing. Even though it's super calm out here, we ran into a relatively little bumpy spot. The days out on the water are often easygoing. It's when evening falls that I start to worry about the weather. Lumpy or not lumpy? I don't think. I don't think it's gonna be lumpy over the bank. I think it's gonna be lumpy. My bed is on lumpy. The lumpy seas didn't quite happen though, and we stealthily dodged some distant, menacing lightning storms on the second night heading towards our destination. It's pretty good the last few days, it's nice and warm. We're almost getting a shower a day almost. It was all very much pleasant sailing all the way to Puerto Angel. And on the final morning before getting there, something large hit our line. Woo! Yeah, that's it. Jump, baby, jump. Woo! Join us next time as we try to catch and release an enormous sailfish. <laughs> but end up making some local fishermen extremely happy instead.